Uh, first, I'd like to thank Kylie and uh, the Kinnon girls for the music uh, this morning. That's, that's not the first time Marla has uh, scheduled Kylie or Kylie and Camry to uh, sing when I've had this responsibility, and I do hold it against her. So, <clears throat> um, welcome uh, to all those that are here from Mountain Camp. Also, I know uh, they just got back recently and had a good week. It sounded like so. We're, we uh, welcome you. <clears throat> it's good to be with you this morning. Um, I guess I better put my glasses on. You know, uh, it seems like um, just overnight I had to put these things on. Um, you know, the hearing took a while. That kind of came slowly. Uh, I almost said selective hearing, but I stopped myself. But uh, the glasses, that, that just happened overnight. I, I told Lori this morning, I don't know what happened, how it happened, when it happened, but all of a sudden, um, I, I can't see. I mean, I, I can see what the words are in front of me now, which I suppose is good, but I can't see you with the glasses on. So... Um, <laughs> you, you probably prefer it the other way around, maybe, but <clears throat> uh, I would be remiss this morning if I didn't um, throw in something real quick about this great nation and the, and the uh, world-changing events that took place nearly 250 years ago um, in this land that we're blessed and privileged to live in. John Adams said, the second day of July, 1776, will be the most memorable epic in the history of America. I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. Of course, we know on, on July 2nd, uh, that's the date that Congress declared independence from Great Britain, and it was on July 4th that they actually adopted, formally adopted the Declaration of Independence. Patrick Henry said, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians, not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this very reason, peoples of other faiths have been afforded asylum, prosperity, and freedom of worship here. If you'd like to, to turn with me um, to Matthew, I have to have these large post-it notes as well so I can see what my scriptures are. Matthew 26, 20 through, through, 22 through 25. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and break it, and blessed it, and gave to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is in remembrance of my body, which I give a ransom for you. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is in remembrance of my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for as many as shall believe on my name for the remission of their sins. And I give unto you a commandment that ye shall observe to do the things which ye have seen me do and bear record of me even unto the end. And in 3 Nephi, chapter 8, 28 through 43, And it came to pass that Jesus commanded his disciples that they should bring forth some bread and wine unto him. And while they were gone for bread and wine, he commanded the multitude that they should sit themselves down upon the earth. And when the disciples had come with bread and wine, he took of the bread and break and blessed it. And he gave unto the disciples and commanded that they should eat. And when they had eaten and were filled, he commanded that they should give unto the multitude. And when the multitude had eaten and were filled, he said unto the disciples, Behold, there shall one be ordained among you, and to him will I give power that he shall break bread and bless it. And give it unto the people of my church, and to all those who shall believe and be baptized in my name. And this shall ye always observe to do, even as I have done, even as I have broken bread and blessed it, and gave it unto you. And this shall ye do in remembrance of my body, which I have shown unto you. And it shall be a testimony unto the Father that ye do always remember me. And if ye do always remember me, ye shall have my spirit to be with you. And it came to pass that when he had said these words, he commanded his disciples that they should take of the wine of the cup and drink of it, and that they should also give unto the multitude that they might drink of it. And it came to pass that they did so and did drink of it and were filled. And they gave unto the multitude and they did drink and they were filled. And when the disciples had done this, Jesus said unto them, Blessed are ye for this thing which ye have done, for this is fulfilling my commandments, and this doth witness 
and to the Father. things, and if ye shall always do these things, blessed are ye, for ye are built upon my rock. <clears throat> and in section 1722a, it is expedient that the church meet together often to partake of bread and wine in remembrance of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Uh, for your consideration this morning, I want to just touch on a few things, um, all centered around the sacrament. Um, we don't have a lot of time together, so uh, it'll be short. <clears throat> but I'm going to take much of the information uh, that we talk about and that I share with you um, from the three standard books, of course, and then uh, from the book, Ordinances and Sacraments of the Church. <clears throat> and as uh, mentioned in Patrick Henry's quote, we know that we're here this morning to worship, worship he who is the Almighty God, and to meet him here with his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our avenue to the Father. We're here to recall what the Son has done for us through life, death, and the resurrection. And this service is a memorial to Jesus Christ. We're here to remember him. And a memorial isn't just about the dying, it's also about the living. To memorialize someone, you must reflect on the life lived by the one you are remembering. It's like that with Christ. We think about what he taught and thought, how he lived and died for us, about his example to us, a life well lived with eternal purpose and meaning. He lived the best life. He lived a perfect life. <clears throat> we need to choose to follow him, and to follow him, we must remember him. The life and ministry of Jesus Christ does not stop with death on the cross, and he desires for us to remember that. He wants us to understand that life for us began when he chose to die for us on that cross. And again, uh, a similar scripture uh, to what we read in Matthew out of uh, Mark chapter 14. <clears throat> uh, we'll read verses 20 through 24. And is the, as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and said, Take it and eat. Behold, this is for you to do in remembrance of my body. For as oft as ye do this, ye will remember this hour that I was with you. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is in remembrance of my blood, which is shed for many, in the New Testament which I give unto you. For of me ye shall bear record unto all the world. And as oft as ye do this ordinance, ye will remember me in this hour that I was with you and drank with you of this cup, even the last time in my ministry. We can also find a similar scripture uh, to both of those in Matthew and Mark in Luke uh, 22 as well. But how beautiful it is to think about what Christ did here uh, in these scriptures. Uh, one of the last acts of love toward man He's instructing and showing us uh, what to do right up until the end. In the book, Ordinances and Sacraments of the Church, uh, we find these words describing the meaning of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is an outward rite in which the assembled church eats bread broken and drinks wine poured by its ordained representatives. After the bread and wine have been blessed by the elders or priests of the church, it is done in token of the constant dependence upon the once crucified and now risen Savior as a source of spiritual life. It is a token of the abiding communion of Christ with his church, which is begun in baptism and sustained and nurtured and perfected through the church. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper occupies a unique place in the church in the interest that we manifest in it. It stands out with clear significance as the rite which from its character and the frequency of its recurrence is most able to unite the saints to each other and to God. Uh, to quote Fred M. Smith, <clears throat> he said, uh, In my opinion, it may rightfully be held that the ordinance of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper is second in importance and significance only to the rite of baptism, 
In fact, it is closely connected with the first. For while in the initiatory rite, we make and assume the covenant of membership, here we renew that covenant. And he goes on to say that the renewal of our covenant deepens its hues of beauty, widens its score of meaning, and grows in its power to lift us up to God. It's rich in symbolisms with appeal to the deeper emotions, movements in the soul and of the heart. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper abounds in food which will nurture religious growth, and oh, how we need this food. In our monthly theme, uh, it says, um, paraphrasing, the words of Christ will tell you all things that you should do. And as we discuss uh, this ordinance this morning uh, that we involve ourselves in, um, we can see its purposes in our lives and why he instituted this most significant ordinance full of rich symbolism and meaning into his church. And we could find that there's at least seven uh, purposes for its introduction to us. Uh, one is to bring Christ to our remembrance. Two is to witness to God that we do remember him. Three is to witness to God that we take afresh the name of Jesus Christ upon us. Four is to witness to God that we will keep his commandments. Five is to renew the gift of the spirit within us. Six is to encourage the spirit of repentance by which there is remission of sin. And seven is to witness the unity of the church. And within these purposes, uh, we can easily associate the renewing of our baptismal covenant as well. Uh, and we need this regular reminder of our covenant made in the waters of baptism, a choice that we made in which we promise to do our very best to serve him all the days of our life. And until our days are done, we need this regular reminder so that we don't fail to make good on our part of our agreement. Fred M. had this to say regarding the need for the regular reminder of the renewing of our covenant, which we know is important. He said, I have known some who claim that a covenant once made need not be renewed. So the renewal of the covenant element of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper becomes negligible in the sight of such. On the contrary, however, history clearly shows, and sometimes painfully so, the necessity of a devout people being often reminded of their duties and their promises of fealty. The constant tendencies to wander from the path of duty, to forget obligations, to fail in fulfilling promises, make it wise and even necessary to remind. In ceremonial manner, the worshipers and devotees that they are under the promise of obedience to God and his mandates. This do in remembrance of me is equivalent to saying that in repetition of ceremonies, reminding us of duty and promise, there is safety. It is previously uh, mentioned, partaking of the communion is an outward expression, which witnesses and promotes unity within the church. It affirms to the group as a whole that as individuals, we are trying to be right in our relationships and interactions with each other. This should express at its best that we are one in the body of Christ, that we are bound together in the fraternity of Jesus Christ and his church. In 3 Nephi uh, 8 and in 1 Corinthians 11, uh, the importance of partaking of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper worthily is expressed. And it says, He that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh condemnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. We must remember Christ, bear his name, and keep his commandments. We should make this a pledge within our hearts so that we truly have a broken heart and a contrite spirit and are not counted as hypocrites partaking unworthily. Another aspect of, of this uh, ordinance that we are involved in today is the aspect of the symbolism that's uh, evident within it. Um, the bread we know symbolizes the body of Christ. The wine symbolizes the blood of Christ. The priesthood symbolizes the authority of Christ in the church. And there's other physical elements, uh, such as the table and the linens, uh, which symbolize such things as the altar, unity, purity, and the love of God. F. Henry Edwards, in his book, Fundamentals, uh, said, Sharing in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper gives us a fuller understanding of what God did for us at Calvary than any form of words can possibly express. At the table of the Lord, <clears throat> the truth of God's love comes home to us far more powerfully through the act of affectionate remembrance than through any verbal pronouncement. This sacrament brings the fact of the atonement into the forefront of mind and heart and conscience. And if we will, the Spirit so interprets it as to cleanse and redirect our entire lives. 
<clears throat> and in closing, um, read just a short little paragraph to you from uh, Brother Evan Fry and what he had to say about the, the communion. He said, the communion is a memorial meal observed in remembrance of the sacrifice of our Lord for us, in remembrance of his body and blood, in remembrance of the covenant which we have made with him, in remembrance of the unity which exists between the members of Christ's church and the unity we have with him. Through this ordinance, we eat of the bread of heaven, which is the spirit, the personality of Christ, drawing our nourishment from his body as we abide in him and function with him and he through us to accomplish the tasks and the purposes of his kingdom. And so it's my prayer that uh, we will not take this, which we've done this morning lightly uh, as we move through this next month ahead. Uh, let us press forward together toward the goals of the church and the building of his kingdom as we have been renewed in spirit and in our covenant. May God bless you in your endeavor to be faithful to him in the task before us. What a beautiful opportunity we have in our lives to assist him in his purposes.